Welcome to the final segment of Derm TV Viewer Question Week for July 2012. Today's episode will feature questions from DermTV.com viewers. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and welcome to Derm TV. For today's first question from Derm TV viewers, this is from Chloe Gillespie. And she says, I wonder if I have large pores on my forehead, should I deal with them the same way as you recommended for large pores on the nose, just with exfoliation? Actually, Chloe, you would deal with them the same way. But for large pores, there are a couple of things I recommend. Number one, always using a cleanser that's marked for oily or acne prone skin to try to get as much of the superficial oils off so that whatever we're using to try to clean out those clogs and pores, we get better penetration. Second, to probably use a toner that has some alcohol in it, maybe only five or 10 percent, but an alcohol containing toner. And in addition to exfoliation with glycolic on a regular basis, for enlarged pores, I also usually recommend using a physical exfoliant, a granular exfoliant at the end of the shower. So this is one of the cases where we're trying to get a synergy between a physical or granular exfoliant and a chemical exfoliant. So at the end of the shower, after your pores have been steamed open, use a granular cleanser very gently for 10 or 15 seconds. And then after the shower, you can apply your glycolic exfoliant to wherever the enlarged pores are on your face. Most common areas being your nose, then your forehead, and then not un uncommonly on the middle of your cheeks right next to your nose. So go for it, and I'm sure you'll be very pleased with the results that you'll get. Our second question today comes from Amanda, who says, Hi, Dr. Schultz. Is the word non-comedogenic on a skincare product enough to conclude that using the product absolutely won't cause breakouts? Isn't every individual skin too different to predict whether it will or won't cause breakouts? And that comes uh, from uh, Amanda. Amanda, you're quite correct. There are no guarantees in life. The fact that it's marked non-comedogenic merely means that it was tested and demonstrated to not cause clogs. Um, but that doesn't mean that in somebody's skin that it can't cause uh, clogging or a breakout. It just means that in most of the people who were tested, there were no problems. So just like any other skincare product, the first time you use it, test it in a small area, maybe an area the size of a quarter in front of your ear, for one day, two days, maybe even three days before you use it on the rest of your body, but uh, on the rest of your face. But don't forget, in addition to being marked non-comedogenic, products which are good for people who have acne or oily prone skin also include products that are labeled as either water-based or oil-free. Olga says, hi Dr. Schultz, how long can I keep unopened skincare products before the ingredients go bad? Thank you in advance. Olga, well for the same reason that after your skincare products are opened, they usually don't go bad. And that reason is, in the skincare products that contain water, there are preservatives. And preservatives are chemicals that kill bacteria and fungi and other germs that would cause infections or cause the products to spoil. So in particular, if a product hasn't been opened, I'm sure you can keep it for a year or two years. But like anything else, there's just a, a matter of good judgment here. I don't think that you want to be using products that are many years old, but certainly many months or a year, a product that hasn't been opened, sure you can use that. And when you use any product, whether it's opened or whether it's not opened, you always want to use good common sense. Take a look at it. Make sure that the material in the product hasn't separated out into two different looking materials like a liquid and a cream. And I did mention that any product with water can have bacteria. Products without water, products that are petroleum based or Vaseline based, they don't support the growth of bacteria. So they don't need preservatives. And those products in particular, so, uh, like uh, lip balms, those products in particular are not going to go bad unless, of course, you leave them out in the sun and they melt. Uh, 
Um, I don't have the um, viewer's name, but this is a question uh, from a young lady about AHAs and BHAs. And the question is, hi, I was reading about AHAs and BHAs. I have acne scars and discolorations, but I also have flesh-colored bumps and a few pimples. I was wondering if I can use BHA products in the morning for the acne and uh, AHA products at night for the discoloration. The answer is, of course you can. By BHA, we're referring to uh, salicylic acid, which is the long-standing, gold standard spot treatment to put on actual pimples for over-the-counter products. And by AHA products, we're talking about glycolic products, which are used to exfoliate. So certainly in the morning or in the evening, however you want to do it, you can use your salicylic acid, BHA, as a spot treatment directly on the pimples and blemishes. And at the other end of the day, uh, for the discolorations, which are usually brown discolorations, you can use an exfoliant like, um, like glycolic as your regular exfoliant, but don't forget. In addition to using an exfoliant to help remove those brown spots, you also may want to use a bleach. And there are a lot of over-the-counter bleaches that contain 2% hydroquinone and other peptide-based bleaches. They all work well, but I would use them together. And um, one other point, which is that uh, when you're using AHAs and BHAs, just don't use them at the same time. Use them at two different, uh, two different ends of the day. The next question um, comes from a young lady in her 30s who asked me not to mention her name. And she said, and, and this is an interesting story, she visited a local department store and sat down for a free facial. While the saleswoman was applying the lipstick, I asked if the lipstick had been used on others. The other time I'd had my makeup applied, the woman used a disposable swab. She replied that she had used it on others, but she sprayed it with alcohol after each application. I freaked out. When I returned home, I sprayed my mouth with 409 cleaner. I held my breath for about a minute and washed my lips off so that I wouldn't swallow any. Then I rinsed my entire mouth with soap. Luckily, I didn't come down with HSV2 or anything terrible. The exception, I noticed three white dots on the corner of my mouth that haven't gone away in a couple of years. I don't remember having them before the department store debacle, but I never inspected my lips before the incident. What a good point this is. And that is, after something like this happens, we look much, much harder than we've ever looked before. And we may notice things that were there, but that we just didn't notice. So the white spots that she's describing are four dye spots. Those are oil glands, which are normal, on the actual mucous membrane or vermilion of the lip. And we usually have more of them on the upper lip than the lower lip, but everybody has them. They're normal. And they're easiest to see if you actually have a close-up mirror and you stretch your upper lip and roll it up a little bit, you'll be able to see these little white dots. They are normal, sebaceous oil glands. And they're larger than most oil glands in your skin. And because they're larger, and because on the mucous membrane, there's no stratum corneum or dead layer to obscure the light coming through, so it's thinner, you can actually see into the skin. That's why you can see these apparently larger and more superficial oil glands, but they're normal oil glands of no concern, having nothing to do with having caught anything and having nothing to do with having had that lipstick applied um, from a applicator which had been used on another person. Our last question today comes from Talia J, and she says, will quitting smoking allow the skin to heal itself such that some of the damage caused by smoking can be reversed? And she's thinking of dilated capillaries, uneven tone and texture, clogged pores, problems with elasticity, loose skin wrinkles, dullness, and grayness. Well, Talia, from what you've described as the issues that you're concerned about with smoking, that certainly is a compelling reason to not want to smoke if it does those things to your skin, and it does all of those things to your skin. And uh, when you stop smoking, whether we're talking about your lungs or your skin, it immediately decelerates the process of damage that has been started by years of smoking. It doesn't stop it, doesn't reverse it, but it stops the progression, slows down the progression, so that all of those nasty things that you described, they will continue to occur, but at a much slower rate. Fortunately, most of them 
can be fixed. Most of them can be treated by a visit to your dermatologist. But th this is a great question because it just underscores all of the nasty things that smoking does to your skin. And one thing that you didn't mention is that it also causes skin cancer. So um, great idea to stop smoking or never start smoking. And if you do have any damage from smoking, see your dermatologist. And a lot of those issues can be helped. So that's it for this month's Viewer Question Week. And don't forget, the subjects from so many Derm TV episodes come from your questions, which are so great. So please keep sending them in, and I'll keep answering as many of them as I can. Please join me again at DermTV.com. If you have a question, please send it to me by visiting DermTV.com slash question. I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and thank you for watching today.